Hello, welcome to Johnny's Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to easily install Nextcloud into your own VPS. When I say easily, that means a couple commands you just need to enter, then the whole system should be up and running. If you look at their website, they showed you a different way how to install Nextcloud server. So we're gonna use all-in-one Docker image. In this video, there's a GitHub page so you can utilize to get more information about the features, about the installation steps and the commands, all be well documented here. But of course, in my blog post, I also showed you a simplified way, a real test how those step by step gonna looks like and what the requirement and the most important in this video I'm gonna show you a live installation how you can easily get it set up and installed. So now let's start it. If you watch my previous video you know I already have quite a few videos here and also quite a few blog posts about how to install Nextcloud. If you haven't watched it, that's fine. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way which is documented in the official GitHub page or in one Docker installation. It just need a couple of commands, then you can get it up and running. Probably 10 minutes. You should be able to make it work. But if you have enough powerful VPS, then the time for installation and configuring will be much shorter. I'm gonna use a free virtual machine from Microsoft Azure for this demonstration, how we can install all-in-one Nextcloud in five minutes. After we set up the environment, we just need to issue one command to get it up and running and then go through configuration process. Again, all steps has been documented here. The requirement is going to be very simple. If you just need a free VPS coming from Azure or coming from Oracle or coming from Google, just one gig RAM, one virtual CPU, 30 gig hard drive is more than enough. You need a public IP, also you need the domain. So that's the requirement. So now let's jump into the installation. For this lab, I'm gonna use Microsoft Azure free VM to do demonstration. Um, if you don't have your own domain, you don't have Azure free plan, then just watch my videos here. You will know how to get your free domain and free Microsoft Azure subscription which gonna let you to play with this lab and do more on that. So we're gonna create a new resource group. I'm gonna put it at the Linux virtual name, next cloud. Doesn't matter which region, we don't need a redundance for our infrastructure. If you need that there will be a charge for it. VM architecture, you can use either ways, ARM64 or x64. It will be supported for the ARM architecture. If you look at the GitHub requirement here, you will find out the CPU architecture will be supported. Of course, certain feature will not be able to run, but that's the not point here. We're gonna use a free tier. Free tier is one virtual CPU, one gig memory, which means you can run it without any charges. I'm gonna use in password as an authentication method. You can put a more port. We were gonna add a more port to there based on requirements. We're gonna have those ports need to be open. 
For the disk, we're gonna choose free disk, 64 gigabyte, free tier, eligible. Networking here, we gonna create our new public IP because uh, we're gonna use a basic one and the dynamic that will give you free public IP to use without any charge. For other options, you can choose default settings, go to next page, and then you can start to review and create the VN for this lab. The deployment probably takes two minutes, so we will later on and I will come back to continue the lab after this is completed. After one minute, the deployment is complete and succeeded. So let's go to resource. We will need a public IP to log in. That's the one thing. We will need the SSH client to log into this VPS. So I just used my favorite SSH client to log in, so first command, get into sudo mode, super user mode, and you need to do apt update to update your catalog of a repository, software repository. After that, we're gonna install Docker, then we're gonna increase our website. The last step, gonna to run our Docker command from the website. So all those commands has been recorded in my blog post. So you can just follow the blog post which you will find the link in this video description. Just step by step guide you can quickly get it running in five minutes. Because we only have one gig RAM, so you may want to add more swap size on your system. So for me, you can just run this command and then select the one to add swap. Uh, I'm gonna put two gig in just in case. So now we see this swap size here. That's almost everything you need to prepare to run Docker, all in one Docker. Other than that, you can just copy the command which I post on my blog post. Just copy, paste in. Since the image never been downloaded, it will go to the Docker repository to pull the image and then launch it. It's ready. So there's a couple of ports you will see, port 80, 8080, 8443. Those ports will need to be open. You also can find those ports from here. So our next step is gonna open those main ports. We can skip 3478 this port because we are not gonna use in talk since we don't have much memory here. If you have four gig RAM, Let's go ahead to do it, but now we're using just one gig RAM to finish this step. In this step, we're gonna just basically open the firewall port. By default, we only have port 22, so we need a couple of ports to be open here. Port 8080, port 80, port 443, and port 8443. Those four ports need to be added in. And also, of course, you need to change the name here a bit. So this is for next cloud. So just add it in. You can choose only TCP or you can choose both. Refresh the page, you should be able to see those ports has been allowed in our inbound lure. 
those four ports. Our next step is going to launch the configuration page for our AIO. Let's copy this public IP for our next step. As mentioned before, the requirement for next cloud or in one installation has domain requirement. So we need a domain for it. So basically, we're going to create a new record, DNS record, to point to the public IP of this domain. You may want to disable proxy status. After that, just save it. So we're going to have this NC next cloud dot 51 sec dot u dot org for our next cloud instance. So very simple, create a new domain record, a record for it. Once you create uh, your domain record and the point to the public IP of your VM instance, then you can use this new domain record to access the port A443 to start the configuration. You have to put HTTPS at the front of URL to make it working. If you don't have your domain configured, you may want to use public IP, but the port will be different. Then you need to use an 8080 port with your IP address to access to it. But since we already have domain configured in our list lab, so it's easier to use in this way. Make sure you copy the password and save it somewhere since it may need to use it later on. So now we're gonna open and I O paste the password in. We are good to go. So next cloud AIO version 7.2.1. So this is our instance, AIO instance, and the configuration page. You just need a little bit configuration, then you can get it done. If you want to see current AIO configuration and documentation link, you click this triangle to expand it. But for us, we just need to put the domain in and the submit the domain. So what they will do is they will automatically generate your SSL certificate for you. Now it's important part, choose the add-ons. Since we are only have one gig RAM, you may not want to enable any extra features like antivirus and that next cloud talk, but I do think we can enable collaborate and the imaginary. Of course, full text search will need one extra additional RAM. Yes, if you have four gig RAM and more than that, then you can enable all of them, but for this lab purpose, we only have one gig RAM, so we are targeting those two small add-ons. Let's save the change. Minimum system requirements. So when you read it, this one, it says at least two gig RAM and dual core CPU and 30 gig system storage. Yeah, we are way below that. Let's see how it works. Time zone, if you want to change your choice, for me, I would just keep it as default. All down the configuration. Now we just need to download and start containers. What well, that means, based on your configuration in this page, the system, the Docker, will automatically spin up other Dockers to support all of AIO features you selected. So there will be a couple of them will be spinned up. We will verify that after the system fully up and running. So for now, you probably just sit behind and just watch your screen to see how it goes. I will pause the video and I will come back once this page has new information updated. After two, three minutes waiting, eventually I got this page. So 
it will shows you how many containers are starting and their status. As you can see from right now the screen, it shows wow, well, there's uh, four containers running and three of them are still starting. Before all containers are fully started, became running status, you will not get that login page and the password. So there's a um, reload button here, so you can try to reload it to see the status again. But I would suggest just stay here for another couple minutes, wait until all containers are up and running, then we can start to log in. I will pause the video recording and come back once the login link is available. I waited about two minutes and I'm gonna try reload it again. Now you can see the portal is ready and also you get the initial next cloud username and password. Just copy it and save it in your safe place and then you can click this button to open your next cloud. You got this login window, just type admin and password login. Right away you get the login window. So now you got a fully running and full featured next cloud instance in your own VPS. Let's try to see how the speed looks like, how the performance looks like when it is running on your one gig RAM, one virtual CPU. Of course, it may not support the multiple persons logging and working at the same time that well, but from this photo page, I see everything is working well. I even can play back the video without a problem. So basically I don't see any big issue when you are just trying to run Nextcloud in your own free VPS with just limited person usage. That should be fine. Okay, that's all for today's video. I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumb up. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please do. That will give me a lot of support. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next episode.